All right, you guys ready to correct some homework? Yeah. Oh, that's the attitude I love. We are going to look over 26 and 27, and we're going to read 28 and 29, and I'm going to leave you today on a cliffhanger. But tomorrow, we will finish the book. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll talk through what that means for the rest of the week. Do you really want that much homework today? Yeah, sure. No. We're going to do it tomorrow, okay? So, my friends who did not finish their work, I'm trusting that you, actually, if you didn't finish your work, why don't you bring your snack and your packet and your book into the hallway and go ahead and you can work, you have some work time to work on that for me, okay? All right, so let's look over those. It was only the front side that you had to do, right? Only 11 questions? Yeah. And I just want to say a, a huge thank you, friends, for using your time wisely in class on Friday. That shows me that I can trust you and you have amazing responsibility. Way to go. All right, so let's look over our questions. Number one, Dominic was excited to show Antonio and Francesca America. But what did he soon realize? What did he realize, Rosie? Dominic was excited to show Antonio and Francesca America, but... It would not be the same. Why is it not the same? You are right, Rosie. That's an awesome answer. Christian, why are they not the same? Because it's 1908. And what is Dominic used to? Do you guys know what year Dominic's from? No. It was around. Let's see. He went back 100 years, and it's 1908. 2008. 2008. So, yes, there's a lot of new stuff, but I just, Yesterday, it's not 1936. <laughs> good try. That's a good try. 2036. 2036. Now, Number two, describe the area where the boys would be sleeping. Where are the boys going to be sleeping, Bennett? And small rooms, good. You also could describe it in just one word too. Do you remember what it's called, that area? Do you remember, not uncomfortable, do you remember what the area is called? Steerage. Steerage, I would accept either. Bennett's listed out fabulously, but if you wrote down steerage, I would accept that also. Brooke? And uh, all right, that is awesome. Mr. Peter, did you get that done? Yeah. Perfect, I will mark that off then. Good job. All right, to, so yes, so grimy, dirty, close, quarter, small, stinky, something along that steerage, bottom of the ship, anything along those lines. Questions on number two? All right, let's look at number three. What were the boys wearing on the ship? Why was this a problem for them? Why are their clothes a problem, Maddie? So first thing, what are they wearing? But yes, obviously. Ryan, what are they wearing? Uh, like really like dirty and worn out clothes. Really dirty and worn out, meaning that if they're worn out, the clothes are very thin and that makes them very Cold. Why is that a problem? Why is it a problem now, Amelia? They can get really cold if they're up on the deck. And uh, do they want to be on the deck or under in steerage? Yeah, neither. You really? But if you had to pick one, which one's better? Yeah. I would say the deck is. Why is the deck a little better? You get fresh air. Are you stuck touching each other like this? It doesn't smell as bad, right? The air, you smell the sea salt water. It's a little a little cleaner. But then when it's raining, they're stuck underneath. Oh, could you imagine how awful that would have been to have spent a week laying in a bed? And that's all you can do. There's no TV. There's really no games. You can't really talk because you're feeling sick. Oh, what a journey. Adam? They said they, that they would, like, go up against the, uh, like, engine or something so they could get cool. Yeah. Do you remember what they would rub up against? It was part of the engine, but do you remember what what it's called when it's not, like, the down below part? Do you remember, Peter? It was, like, the big smokestacks. 
Do you guys know what the smokestacks would look like on a ship? Here, let's let's do this. Um, yeah, so when they're on a ship, uh, now on cruise ships, they look more like this one where they have a, a lot going on. But Dominic's uh, journey one probably looks something like this, where they had uh, the um, big piles and they had smoke coming out of them if they, that engine was running. Yeah, uh, yep. Uh, that one is the Titanic. The Titanic actually had some fake ones, which is crazy, just because they thought it looked cool. Yeah. But uh, they would be useful for the engine so that the smoke from the coal could go out. So they would lean against it to warm up because... Oh, wrong tab. Because their clothes were not that nice. Why didn't the first class people have to lean against the smokestacks? They had, like, they had, like, huh? What did they have, Lizzie? They had those nice fur coats, remember? They could warm up with their big coats. Good. All right. Why did Dominic want to use the bathroom? Why did he want to, Lily? He couldn't stand the filth. Raise your hand if you feel like Dominic and you were like, I would need to wash up. But like, I don't care. I need to use the bathroom. I would for sure. But you didn't know that at the time. All right. So now Ryan goes, I wouldn't because they're so awful, which leads us to number five. Why is that a bad idea? Why was Dominic's idea to use the bathroom a bad idea? Levi? It was really stinky. What else was going on? Claire? He saw a bucket of throw up and other stuff. And by other stuff, we mean other things that come out of people that we don't want to see on the floor in a bucket, right? What else was wrong? Think through what Dominic felt when he was walking through. What did he feel? Adam? Um, the floor was sticky and he said there were no sinks, no toilets, no toilets. And no yeah, there's no towels, no toilet paper, no sinks, just those buckets and the dirty, grimy floor. Because what happened to the buckets? They got overflowed. And where does overflow go? On the floor. And remember, did Dominic have shoes on? Bathroom, yeah. It was more of a bathroom. All right, next up. What's funny about Antonio's dream? He's going to grow up. What's funny about it? What's so funny, Christian? He wants to be a fat man. Because then he thinks, if I'm a big fat man, I'm never going to be hungry. But is that true? No. But it's kind of silly, right? All right. What's Francesco's plan for when he grows up? Francesco has his grand plan. Zach, what's his plan? That's part of it. Yep, he's going to name his firstborn son, Salvatore. What else, Thomas? He's going to have a big family and a big house. Anything else to add to that? I think you guys nailed it. That was everything that I saw, too. Good. Why do none of the passengers complain about the conditions aboard the ship? Remember Dominic was just like, nobody's complaining? Why? Why is no one complaining, Maddie? They're scared that they're going to get kicked off. And if you get kicked off, what's probably going to happen to you? No. They're going to be stuck at sea. You're going to be stuck at sea or no America for you. And you're stuck worse off than you were. Good. Anything else to add to that one? No. I, Amelia? I mean, they would do anything. And they kind of said, right, they're going to do anything it takes to get to America, which includes the bad passage. That's the way it is. Thomas? They didn't have a lot of safety boats. You want to know why the boats didn't have a lot of safety boats? Because they didn't think it looked good. They thought, they thought people wouldn't want to buy tickets for the ship if it was too crowded with all those safety boats. What? No, but actually, that's why so many people died on the Titanic, because they didn't have enough safety boats and life vests for everybody, because they were like, eh, it's not going to sink, and it looks bad if we have all those extra little boats around. 
Like, so now, do you know what all ships have to have? They have to have more than enough safety boats and more than enough life vests uh, to make sure. Yep. Uh, we learn from our mistakes. All right. Holy moly. All right. Back on track. Um, we are at number nine, I think, right? Would you have complained? Yes or no? Explain means yes or no. What do you think, Claire? Would you have complained? I wouldn't complain because I would not want them to throw me overboard. I wouldn't want them. Does everyone, does anyone agree with Claire and you would not complain? All right. How many of you disagree with Claire and you would have complained? All right. Why would you have complained, Holly? Why would you have complained? During this, like, the same so you would have complained in hopes that the future would be better? Okay. Who has a different reason? Ryan, what's your reason? Uh, because I, I would have complained because it's like, I wouldn't want to be like living in my, like staying a couple of weeks in. Like you wouldn't want to be sitting in people's <laughs> bathroom waste, right? So maybe you complain. Like, that's really gross and I'm not a big fan of gross. It's really gross and yeah, we don't really like things to be uncomfortable or gross. Last one, Monica, why would you complain? I would just at least complain that they would throw like away the buckets, like maybe empty it somewhere in the sea at least. Well, but then those poor fish. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, for trade friends, ba -ba 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 -ba. for number nine, is there a right and a wrong answer? No. No, that one's an opinion. So depending on what you said would get you your points. So make sure you're practicing giving those good explanations. All right, number 10, what happened on the 15th day of the ship? How did the passengers react on the 15th day? Do you remember, Nathan? The, and the land was spotted and the passengers were super happy. Michael, you want to add to it? The third class people were able to come up on deck to try to see land. Rosie? Um, on the 15th day of the trip, they saw land and they kissed, hugged, and cried. Remember, they kissed, hugged, and they cried because they were just so happy. Is it something along those lines about them just being super, super happy, friends? Good. Yeah, they were praying, they were thinking, they were kissing and hugging, grabbing each other. Good. All right, and then number 11. What was the next gift that Francesco gave Dominic? First, let's answer that part. What was the next gift Francesco gave him? Thomas? Was Salvatore's shirt. How does Dominic feel about that gift? He got Francesco gave him a um, Salvatore shirt. How does Dominic feel about that? How does Dominic feel, Christian? Like a little, like, a bit more like, like, I don't know, like, richer. He feels really rich. Why does he feel so rich wearing this shirt? Because is it is it like a silk, a really nice shirt? No, it's not really that nice. Do you remember what Dominic said people today would have done to him if they saw him in that shirt? They would have laughed at him. So why is he feeling so rich? Why is he feeling so rich, Amelia? I mean, it's back then, and, uh, I mean, if it was one of Salvatore's shirts, he felt really, like, proud of Salvatore, and, uh, Salvatore really liked it, and he got to know him. You're right. They were really good friends, so he feels almost proud to wear it. I agree with that. Now, we talked a lot about this chapter, about the conditions of the ship. Why else might Dominic feel grateful or proud to wear this shirt? Think through what, where the shirt has been and what he's been through. Why would Dominic like this gift? Why would Dominic like it, Claire? Because, like, he doesn't, well, it's, like, not as dirty as his other It's not as dirty, right? He's been wearing that grimy, filled shirt with all the soot and just grossness. Now we get to clean church. But it got gross and dirty. Remember, they were sitting on the ship. They were up against that, those smokestacks with all the coal dust coming down on them. Now we had so much grime. Yeah, so much grime. Ugh. Now, 
gets a clean shirt at least. And it was Salvatore's. Kind of both of those together. Awesome job. All right. We are going to read 28 and 29 today. Is there anything happy about this book? Is there anything happy? Well, lots of things. Dominic made friends. What? He has. But he's made friends. Dominic didn't have any friends before. Two more than he had before. What else is something that might have been happy in this story? Anything else you can think of? Zach? He got to eat fresh cherries from a, a cherry um, orchard? I think it's called cherry. He got, is that happy? No. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie, what else is happy? He got to meet Violetta, everyone's favorite. We're looking on the bright side, friends. Way to be optimistic. That's what we're trying to find, and you keep being pessimistic and pushing me down. Let me shine. Let me shine. All right. All right, let's get to reading. Because we last left off and Dominic felt like he'd never worn anything finer. Remember, we left it and he had his nice shirt on. There were over a thousand passengers aboard the New Amsterdam. And most of them clambered onto the decks, anxious to get a first glimpse of the new country. Dominic and others had to wait in a long line by the stairwell. When they were finally able to make their way up the steps, they had to squeeze their way to the decks railing. An odd hush fell over the crowd as they sailed into the Hudson Bay and caught their first glimpse of the New York skyline. Many of the passengers gaped over the deck's rails, having never seen a building higher than two stories. So imagine like our school, how we have our floor and then the one above us. They've never seen a building taller than this. Wow. Yeah, because in 1908, they didn't have skyscrapers and stuff like that. They were used, they only had short buildings especially if you're in a poor little city like avaletto do you think they have buildings that are 20 stories high we just said that they had never seen them so <laughs> at the sight of the statue of liberty everyone became silent with her torch held high her calm strength standing firm against wind and water she awed everyone and moved many to tears. What do you think this Statue of Liberty is representing to the passengers uh, on the New Amsterdam? What do you think, Amelia? Since we're known as the land of the free, once you see that, it's just you know that you're free. You know you're going to have freedom. You're in the land of the free. Um, Eddie? The Statue of Liberty um, is not actually green it was actually copper so think of like a new penny and then it got old and oxidized so oxygen air around it it turned it green so when we first got the statue of liberty it was that penny color but by now we've had it for a couple hundred years it's green in the story it's green all right so statue um the Lady Liberty, we picture our freedom. Good, it's a sign of freedom, a sign of America. Dominic stared at his favorite statue and felt his own tears welling in his eyes, for he finally understood just how welcoming her, just how much her welcoming and powerful presence meant to the immigrants who had come so far. It's good to see you again, Lady Liberty, he whispered as they sailed past the towering figure. Staring out at the New York skyline, Dominic couldn't believe his eyes. Everything seemed so short. Where were his old favorites? The Empire State Building and the Twin Towers were nowhere to be seen. Ooh, so that kind of gives us a good clue in on our timeline. What year does it have to be then? Uh, before, the Twin Towers. before the Twin Towers. So do you know what year the Twin Towers fell? 2001. 2001. So this has to either be Dominic's either from. Wait, can we see what it's? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can look back. We'll look at the front and figure out when it was made. So. 
1997. Copyright 1997. So probably around that time, I was going to guess maybe 2000. So definitely before 9-11, because we have the Twin Towers Dominic's used to. But are they in the past right now? Yep. Nope. nope, they're the missing from the skyline. Good. Where Everything seems so short. Where were his old favorites? The Empire State Building and the Twin Towers were nowhere to be seen. In fact, most of his favorite buildings were gone. He realized with a shock that this was indeed what New York looked like in 1908. It's not New York, he gasped. Sure it is, a man standing beside him said. No, not my New York, Dominic whispered under his breath. The realization that he might never see his New York and his world in his own time gripped him with fear. If Francesco and Antonio were to live in New Jersey, then Dominic would be living alone with yet another strange family in New York. But this would be the New York of 1908. Suddenly, he felt the old familiar feeling of loneliness sweeping over him. Only this time, they were accompanied with a new fear. How was he to fit into a new family in such an old time? It had been easy with Francesco and the others, but what if this new family wasn't nice to him? What if they didn't like him? Who could he turn to for help in the New York of 1908? It took hours for them to disembark onto the Hudson River. Antonio began to get restless, and Francesco and Dominic took turns carrying him on their shoulders. By the time they reached the pier, everyone was anxious to feel solid ground under their feet once again. No one complained of the long wait for the ferries to arrive, for it was a relief just not to be bobbing up and down on the boat. Dominic watched at the, uh, as thousands of faces passed by, crammed onto the decks of the many steamships and ferries that choked the harbor. A ferryman called out a command in English. Dominic and the others could not make out his words, but they could see his hands directing them onto the game planks. Why can't Dominic understand him? He is remembered he's Italian now. He's speaking Italian. Good. In a crush of baskets, boxes, and suitcases, they were all packed onto the ferries for the ride to Ellis Island. There was another long wait for the ferries engines uh, before the ferries engines started up. As they began to move, Dominic remembered his last ferry ride over to Ellis Island and how very different it had been. He remembered how much room everyone had aboard that ship. He had actually run on the decks. Now, no one had been dirty or hungry or sick. Everyone had been wearing clean clothes and people had laughed and joked. No one was laughing now as he stood squeezed between an old grizzled faced man that smelled of cheese and vomit and a woman carrying a crying baby who smelled every bit as bad. Bundles, boxes, and bodies pressed against him as Dominic struggled to get a breath of fresh air. When the castle-like facade of Ellis Island came clearly into view, a cheer went up and the air crackled with excitement. Such a palace, Antonio marveled. They really do live like kings and queens here, a woman beside them whispered. A wave of goosebumps rolled across Dominic's arms as he stared at the horse-drawn carriages and carts that lined the docks. Meanwhile, anxious conversations had sprung up throughout the crowd as the immigrants nervously eyed the imposing buildings on the island. The buttonhook men are the worst, Dominic heard a boy behind them say. They turn your eyelids inside out with their hooks. Why do they do such things? Antonio asked, turning around. That is, this is, no, that is how they look for disease in the eye. It's part of the batteria. What they put you through before you are allowed into the country, came the whispered reply. Antonio began to rub his eyes fearfully as they followed the crowd off the ferry into the long line that snaked its way up to Ellis Island's main entrance. Everyone was talking about the battery of inspections that was given to weed out those who were not fit to enter America. I'm going to pause. I want you to point to that word battery on the top of page 149. Now, normally when we think battery, what do you think of? Right, like something that powers something, a battery. What do you think this battery means? Do you think it's the same? No. no. What do you think? Battery of inspections that was about to be a weed, given to weed out. Zach? 
the man here. Okay, Amelia. Think through what the boy described too. Remember that one boy behind him was like talking about the button hook guy or button hook man, and he talked about the battery. Uh, what do you think battery of inspections means then, Claire? Like power, like you know, power. It they kind of yeah kind of going off as X too. It's like the power of the inspection, how like powerful they are. They're going through and they're kind of putting you through a lot of uh, like physical like pushes and um, strains on you. Okay, they're really checking everything. Rosie? I think this, the building was like a brick color. I don't know for sure, but uh, it's a good question. I can look into it if you want, or you can too if you want. All right, so they're going through and they're gonna have all of those inspections. What if we do not pass the inspections? Francesco asked nervously. Don't worry, Dominic assured him. Just answer the questions the way the ticket agents told us to and everything will be all right. The ticket agents who worked for the shipping companies had already gone over these questions with their passengers, feeding them the correct answers. For any immigrant not accepted into America was sent back at the shipping company's expense. So what does that mean? They would be sent back, and who pays for it? The shipping company. So the people on the boat who work for the boat, they would have to have part, probably part of their salary taken out so that they could pay for the immigrants to go sent back to Italy. So what did the shipping agents do to make sure people didn't get sent back? They gave them the correct answers. They gave them the answers. They said, answer this way, answer this way, answer this way. So... And then they practice answering them um, for them, so that way they don't have to get sent back, one. Because do the immigrants want to get sent back? No. 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 And, then, and the shipping company doesn't want to have to pay more money for them, right? They don't want to have to waste their money. Yep. All right. But now, standing so close to their dreams, with so much depending on each answer, everyone grew worried. What if we make mistakes? Francesco whispered anxiously. What if we don't give the right answers? Antonio, don't stick your tongue out like that. You don't want them to think you, you are an idiot. You don't want them to think you are an idiot, right, for sticking his tongue out, being like, mm, like, you don't want them to think that. It would make a good impression. Just don't think so much about it, Dominic said, trying to sound confident. After waiting for a long time, Dominic and Antonio sat down on the line, too tired to stand any longer. They were under the canopy leading to the building's large doors, leaning against a big pillar. Francesco reached into his pocket and pulled out Salvatore's gold key and chain. He put the chain around his neck. Dominic's heart leaped at the sight of it. The key! You want the key! You want the key! He cried. Dominic leaned back against the pillar, dumbstruck. With so much happening, he had forgotten to ask about the key. Francesco lowered his head sadly and placed his hand over the key. Dominic leaned in closer, as Francesco said in a whisper, I will wear it for you, Salvatore. I shall, shall keep it close to my heart until my own son can wear it. Do you think Dominic is his son? Yeah. No, it's, um, okay, his dad is Francesco's son that he passed it down. Oh, okay, but think through. How much older are your parents than you, you generally? Uh, Around probably 20 to 40 years. Let's go in that range. 20 to 40 years older. How far back are they? About 100 years ago. So does that make sense for Francesco's son to be Dominic's dad? No. So who do you think this guy could be then? Some sort of great great grandfather, right? Uh, could it be his grandfather? No. No. Well, let's think. If you had forty, he had a kid when he was forty years old, and then that kid had a kid when he was forty years old. That'd be about eighty years. It could be. Maybe I'm thinking at least great grandpa, right? Probably great great grandpa. Lucy. Um, are the immigrant, like, ship's condition better now? Immigrants, uh, they do, 
you, most of them come over on like airplanes eh? and you have to go through a lot of stuff. There are other ways immigrants come, but it's a lot. And as you go through more social studies, when you get older, you'll talk more about those. Are they like nicer conditions now? Depends on how the immigrants come over. Like if they come over on their own, like these immigrants were wanting to, then yeah, usually if they're paying for it, they're much nicer. But if they're kind of forced, remember we talked about pull factors where people are forced out of countries, generally those aren't as nice a condition. So better than this, but not nice. Does that make sense? But I would still it would be better. It'd still be better. Adam? So um, his dad's name was Sal. So that could be short for Sal Court. So then Sal's um, son could be John McStack. But going off of how long ago we are, that's the only catch. But sometimes, what do families do? They pass on names. So maybe Salvatore, right? Dominic has a kid named Jim Salvatore. What could that Salvatore do? Have another kid, and what could he name that kid? He could name him Salvatore. Or that kid could name his kid after who? Salvatore after Grandpa, right? Oh, goodness. All right, we got one more chapter to go. Are you ready to see what's next? All right. All right, fourth grade friends. Let's keep reading. Chapter 29, last one for today. You're doing an amazing job being responsible and following along, friends. Keep it up. Meanwhile, Antonio had bent down and picked up a small, rusty pin. Antonio, give me that pen, Francesco demanded. We don't need you to scratch yourself now. Francesco stood behind them, and as he leaned against a pillar, he began to scratch a little picture onto its plaster surface. Why do you get to use the pen and I don't, Antonio complained. Because I am older and more careful, Francesco explained. What are you drawing, Antonio demanded, jumping up to get a closer look. The most beautiful goat in Italy, Francesco said softly as he continued to draw. But you've given her wings, observed Antonio. Goats don't have wings. It is what I wish for her to have, uh, Francesco whispered. With wings, she could fly to America. Come, Dominic, Antonio called. Come and see what Francesco's funny drawing. Come see Violetta with wings. Uh, Dominic looked at the drawing and smiled. It's good, he said, but she's not eating anything. Francesco smiled too and was about to draw something for her to eat when the line suddenly lurched forward and they found themselves moving through the big doors. Why do you think they laughed at that? Go, right, Violetta's always eating, so they were like, you can't have a picture of Violetta without some food. She's always eating something. We've got to have something in there. Antonio covered his ears with his hands, for the din of noise in the great hall was deafening. A great swell of sound echoed off the walls and bounced around them as people were talking, laughing, crying, and yelling, all in different languages and all at once. Dominic's eyes searched the empty walls as they began to climb up the grand staircase. Gone were the photographs. Gone were the displays. There were no tourists with cameras. No gift shops, no computer screens. There were just people, lots and lots of people. It was as though all of the photos and displays from the museum had suddenly come to life. Dominic and the others stared wide-eyed at the strange assortment of faces and clothing. When they had finally reached the first desk and the inspector had looked over their papers, he tried talking them to, to them in English. Dominic was stunned to realize that, hard as he tried, he couldn't remember a single word of the language. It was as though he had never known it. Non paro inglese. I don't speak English, Francesco told the inspector. Parla italiano? Do you speak Italian? Francesco asked the man. But the man shook his head no and called for an interpreter to help them. Then he pointed to the names on the tickets and spoke again in English, in words the boys could not understand. The interpreter, who knew English, and Italian translated for them. Cantori brothers, go to the next line, he said. Cantori, Dominic whispered. Why did he say Cantor Cantori? How does he know my name? Mi chiamo Candiano, Francesco tried to explain to them. 
My name is Condiano. We are the Condiano brothers. The man took their tickets and showed them where the shipping agent had written their names. Antonio Cantori, Salvatore Cantori, and Francesco Cantori. The man read aloud, Cantori. What happened to Candiano? Francesco asked. The inspector shrugged. The shipping agent wrote it as Cantori. That's your name now. What are we kind of feeling in our guts? Yeah. Are we kind of, we're starting to think we're a little more right? Yeah. All right, last page. Dominic stared as chills shot up his spine. But that's not our name, Francesco cried. Maybe not in Italy, the interpreter explained. But here in America, it is. Things are not like they were back in Italy. You have crossed the ocean. You are Americans now. Francesco thought this over. Cantori, he whispered, rolling the name over his tongue. Sono Americano. I am American. I am a Cantori. That's my name, Dominic cried. Yeah, now it can be your name too, Francesco agreed. <laughs> no, you don't understand, his voice trailed off to a whisper as he caught sight of a glint of gold peeking out from under Francesco's shirt. It was Salvatore's key, the key that would one day be his own. S.C. Dominic whispered the initials he knew so well under his breath, and suddenly he began to understand. If Francesco's name was now Cantori, and if he kept the key to give to his son, and that son gave it to his son, and it eventually came to Dominic then, could that mean that Francesco was Dominic's great grandfather? Don, Don, Don! Oh my goodness. I told you it's a good book, though. Right? Oh, we talked a lot about it, though. So, is this really shocking information? No, no, It reminds me of what is it, the TikTok? This is completely new information. I had no idea about this. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Someone talking about it and said, like, people speak different languages, so they didn't know how to pronounce the last name, so they just wrote it down how they thought it sounded. And what happens if they can't really read Italian or, like, read somebody's handwriting, too? I think what would they do? If you can't really read a handwriting, what would you do? I would just kind of guess at it and get it as close as you could, right? Well, like I can tell that's a C and an A and an N, and then the rest got a little eh. So this is your, this is what it is. Yep. And why are the shipping agents doing that? Do you remember too? They don't want them to come back, right? They're like, nope. This is what it is. Just keep it. Just keep it. That's your new name, Rosie. Francesco was like, um, and Dominic said, like, that's my name, and then, um, Francesco was like, yeah, it's more than two. I love that part. That's my name! Yeah, it can be your name, and Dominic's like, ah, because remember, do they believe him? <laughs> Goodness. All right, let's take a look over your homework for today, friends. On the back side of that page we looked over, you're going to do the rest of that backside, okay? So it looks like 19 questions, but we've already done 11. So really, it's only like eight, okay? So, oh, yep. So what we're going to do is you're going to circle number 10, 12, 13, 14. 14, we talked about Venn diagrams before. Do you remember what goes in the middle? The things they have in common. And then what goes on the outsides? Things that are different. Good. 15 should be a nice, pretty short one. 16, 17, 18, 19 should be short. Let's see. 20 will be a really easy one. We already talked about it. And then go ahead and cross off the middle part with the boxes right here. Okay, but I do want you to do the vocab word matching down below, okay? So you don't have to do that middle part, but I want you to do the vocab matching. All right, thanks for joining.